I want to express thanks to Laura and Chris for playing I Love to Tell the Story because that's what we're all about this morning and uh, we are staying with our December team, Love Came Down at Christmas, but today the emphasis is on Joseph's story and Joseph's love. So our first song is Joseph Dearest. You will find that in the Faith We Sing on page 2099 or on the screen. It's an old German carol. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we join together.
So Christ Church Troy is a reconciling congregation of the United Methodist Church, which means, briefly, that everyone is welcome here, no exceptions. If it's your first time here, or your first time in a while, then we're glad you came. If you have any questions about where things are, then please talk to the ushers who are in the back of the sanctuary. So if you can, please take a moment to fill out the fellowship pads at the end of your pew. These are collected each week, and Judy, who has now been with us for a couple of months, uses them both to learn our names and to pray for us. Also, if you're willing, if you look in the bulletin, there's an insert there which lists some opportunities for service. So if you're willing to do so, fill it out and talk to somebody on the leadership team or Judy to see if you have some particular calling to do something for the church that's listed on that page. So one of the best things about this congregation is the fellowship that we share with each other. So after the service, if you can, please stay for coffee hour to mingle and chat. And now is the time in the service where we pass the peace of Christ to each other. So get up and walk around and say hello to your neighbor if you can. Ashley, Ashley can we light the candle first? Oh. 
This is the part in the service where we light the Advent candle. Good morning. This is the third Sunday of Advent, joy and good news. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. Let us pray. Open us to joy this Advent season, O Lord. Help us to see your love as it springs up around us. Amen. And we'll sing verse 3 of Light the Advent Candle. to a story that was written long ago about a kingdom on a mountain and the valley far below on the mountain was a treasure buried deep beneath the stone and the valley people swore they'd have it for their very own go ahead and eat your neighbor go ahead and teed a friend Tin soldier rides away. So the people of the valley sent a message up the hill asking for the buried treasure, tons of gold for it they kill. Came an answer from the kingdom with our brothers, we will share all the secrets of our mountain, all the riches. Buried there. Now the valley cried with anger. Mount your horses, draw your swords, and they killed the mountain people. So they won their just reward. Now they stood beside the treasure on the mountain, dark and red. They turned the stone and looked beneath it. Peace on earth was all it said.
story today for the children is Don Donkey Daniel in Bethlehem. You like that one? If anyone wants to come up and um, sit in the front bench uh, while I read this, you are welcome to do that. And for any children at home, if you're in the other room and you hear my voice, come on in so you can see Don Donkey Daniel in Bethlehem. <laughs> this is written by Janice Kramer, and the pictures are by Alice Hauser. <laughs> Nearby the town of Nazareth a long, long time ago, there lived a little donkey with a nose as white as snow. His name was Donkey Daniel. He was very strong indeed. Why, he could carry anything that anyone might need. He loved his master, Joseph, who was gentle as could be. He loved his cozy little stall. He loved his favorite tree. But Donkey Daniel had a wish, a wish he somehow knew had very, very little chance of ever coming true. He wanted so to see the world, to learn what lay beyond the fences of his master's yard, the neighbor's muddy pond. Perhaps behind those distant hills, he thought, the sky is brown. Perhaps the grass is pink. Perhaps the trees grow upside down. One morning, Master Joseph came to Donkey Daniel's stall. I've brought your breakfast, Joseph said. Be sure to eat it all. Today we leave for Bethlehem, and you must come along to bring some things and carry Mary on your back so strong. I'm going to go to Bethlehem, thought Donkey Daniel. Whee! Oh, now I'll learn about the world. Oh, now I'll get to see. He stood impatiently as Joseph started in to pack the things he'd have to carry on his sturdy little back. First came a leather saddle, then some bags of food and drink, and a tiny sack of money. He could hear the coins go clink. Then Joseph lifted Mary up. She seemed so very small that Donkey Daniel hardly felt her on his back at all. It's time for us to go, said Joseph. I will walk ahead. And Donkey Daniel followed where his gentle master led. They passed the houses and the wall. Right out of town they went. And when they reached the distant hills, they started their ascent. Straight up they climbed till Donkey Daniel thought they'd hit the sky. Why, I can see for miles around, he cried. Oh my, oh my. Then down they went to valleys green, past laughing little streams. The real world, Donkey Daniel thought, is better than my dreams. They walked and walked for days, and then at last, one afternoon, good Joseph cried, There's Bethlehem! We ought to be there soon. That is good news, said Mary. Oh, how gladly she replied, for she was very tired from the long and bumpy ride. The town of Bethlehem was filled with visitors that day, so Joseph had to look and look to find a place to stay. But no one had an empty room, and so they had to sleep on hay inside a stable filled with chickens, cows, and sheep. They ate their supper, made their beds, and shut the stable door. Then Mary fell asleep, and Joseph started in to snore. Good night, said Donkey Daniel to the chickens, cows, and sheep. Soon all was calm and silent. Everyone was fast asleep. But Donkey Daniel wakened in the middle of the night. How strange, he mumbled. Mary's up. The stable's filled with light. And Joseph, why is he awake? Whatever can it be? I must find out what's going on. I must get up and see. And there's more to the story, which will be revealed next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. So stay tuned. Let's have a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that with all the stories, the big story, the underlying story, everybody's story, is that you love. And it's all about you. And the way you create, and the way you make new possibilities, and the way you draw people to yourself. Bless each one here today. Bless each one who hears this story. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Let's remain seated and join in the first verse of Come and Find the Quiet Center. We thank you that amidst the swirling winds and amidst the confusion, there is you. We thank you for that guiding light that is your love. Oh God, we wish that you would just wave a magic wand and make all the fires in California stop and make all the wars around the world stop and make all the hatred stop and make all the misunderstanding stop. But we know you don't work by force. You work by love and you work through your people who love you and, and, and try to do what you would have us do. And so we need your guidance. 
when we need your warmth and we need your reassurance and we need the way you bring us together in a world that tries desperately to, to separate us. For those of us who have too many things, show us the emptiness of that. And for those of us who don't have enough, help us find those who will share with us. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of this day, for the opportunities we will have to know you and to serve you and to love you. We thank you for the gift of Jesus, you made flesh so that we might know what you were like, so that we might know who we are and whose we are. We pray for all who are suffering today, for all who are ill, for those who are recuperating from surgeries, from illness. We pray for those who are anxious. We pray for those who need a way forward and don't know what that looks like. And oh God, we ask especially that you would strengthen those who want to make new beginnings those whose resolve is high, but who sometimes find conditions around them conducive not to new beginnings, but to the old, same old, same old. Bless each one here. Bless each who, who hears this. We pray in the spirit of Christ who taught his disciples to pray in a language unfamiliar to us, and so we join in this trans. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Today's scripture is taken from Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. Thank you, Nancy. Our worship theme for December has been Love Came Down at Christmas, and it is the power of love that we celebrate at Christmas. The scripture for the first Sunday of December was about God's love that persists in reaching out to people through the centuries, persists and reaches out much like the angel that reached out to Mary to seek her cooperation in bringing about the long-awaited Messiah. The scripture for the second Sunday of December was about Mary's love that was flexible, enabling her to change her life's plans in order to bring forth the Messiah. The scripture for today, the third Sunday of December, is about Joseph's love, which was supportive, supported giving Mary additional strength so she could bring forth the Messiah. 
and the scripture for next Sunday morning, the fourth Sunday of December, will be about the love we find in the Christmas story that cooperates in bringing forth. Seven, we will share a scripture that focuses on love that searches so that the Messiah might be discovered. Five different demonstrations of love. Five different characters in the cosmic play, but all focused on what God does, what God sets into motion, and how human beings respond. But for today, let's listen to Joseph's story. He had his life all mapped out. He had learned a trade so he could support himself and a family, and he found a woman that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with. His parents and hers approved of their relationship. In just a short time, the knot would be tied. Life was good. Then came the night he would never forget. They had had dinner together and then gone for a walk. The stars overhead seemed to shine just for them. The moon had never been more radiant. But then she said, we need to talk. Words no man ever wants to hear from the woman he loves. He felt a sliver of uneasiness. Talk? What about? he asked. I'm pregnant. He looked at her in disbelief. He was a godly man. She was a virtuous woman who shared his values of purity and chastity. They were not like some couples they knew who chose to behave as if they were already married before the final vows had been said. There must be some mistake. What did you say, he asked. Her eyes were filled with tears. I'm pregnant. There was only one explanation. She was not what she seemed. He had been mistaken. He had handed her his love, and she had betrayed him. Somewhere in the vicinity of his heart, a narrow pain began to build. How could you? He could barely choke out the words, his hurt and anger possessing him, until he felt filled up with the poison. How could you? Tears sprang to his eyes, but he furiously blinked them away. He had been holding her hand, but now he hastily withdrew it, not wanting to soil himself with the touch of her skin. How could you? Unbidden images filled his mind, images of another man touching his Mary. He wanted to find that man and kill him. No. No, death would be too good. He wanted to find that man and torture him for all eternity. How could Mary have permitted this? She was his. They were promised to each other in a covenant as binding as marriage. They had made plans together. He had let down his guard and pledged her his love. He had been so proud being seen with her, walking through the village like like he had a prize. And now this. How many other people knew? Were his friends even now laughing at his ignorance about what Mary was really like? Did they pity him for being so gullible as to believe her innocent act? She could see his anger, his hurt, his humiliation. She reached out to soothe him, but he stepped away. You don't understand, she sobbed, hurting, because he was hurt. No one touched me. It was from the Holy Spirit. I am to bear the Messiah. He knew his people had waited for the Messiah for centuries, but here, now, interrupting their plans, No, it couldn't be. He hurt too much to know what to say, what to do. He wanted to bury himself in her arms for comfort, but those arms, that nurturing body, now seemed sullied. 
He was so angry he had trouble thinking straight. He would need time to sort this all out. He could not bear to be with her, to see the tears in her eyes, to imagine the slight rise of her belly. Abruptly, he abandoned her on the road and headed back to his parents' house. Later that night, as he tossed and turned on his narrow bed, he tried to be logical about this thing which defied logic. He tried to be rational about this thing which was irrational. If she had been unfaithful, he could bring her up on charges and she could even be stoned for adultery, but he couldn't bring it upon himself to inflict that upon her. Maybe she had been attacked and and was too distraught to tell him. Heaven knows there were all these Roman occupation soldiers hanging around. He certainly wouldn't blame her for an attack, but no one could expect him to raise another man's child. He finally decided he would quietly end the agreement to marry her. It was unfortunate, but these things happened. They were both young. He would get over the heartbreak of his loss and get on with his life. Wearily, he closed his eyes, willing his brain to turn off. Then it happened. One minute he was awake, and next he was listening to an angel telling him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife, for the child conceived in her was of God. And the angel said the child's name would be Jesus. And the angel called Joseph by his very long name, son of David. The child's name would be Jesus, which meant salvation. Joseph knew this was significant, for there were only five people in the whole history of the Jewish people whose names were given to them before their births. Isaac, Ishmael, Moses, Solomon, and the name of the Messiah. How kind of God to have included that in the angel's message so that he would feel some assurance, some proof, if you will, that the child was a long-awaited Messiah. And how kind of God to have the angel tell him, have the angel remind him that he wasn't a lone wolf, but that he was part of a whole web of relationships, that he was son of David. So Joseph believed Mary. And they went ahead with their marriage plans. Theirs was not the normal wedding night, however, as Joseph did not unite with Mary until after the birth of the Messiah, born in Bethlehem. About Joseph's life after that, we know very little except that he was supportive of Mary and her child. He was there for them. He was the first person after Mary to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. It must have meant the world to Mary to know that Joseph supported her in this unprecedented and scary adventure. Looking at this first century story with 21st century eyes and brains is to ask of our brains to do something completely foreign to them. You and I have been trained by our culture to examine evidence, to look for hard facts, to be impatient with hints, with poetry, with artistic expression. When money gets short, it's the arts that get cut in education budgets. Men especially are encouraged to emphasize sports and devalue the arts, to have little patience with poetry or dream imagery. And yet this sort of appreciation of arts, of poetry, is exactly what is needed to derive meaning from Joseph's story. Something undeniable happened to Joseph. 
something that took a man who was undoubtedly completely humiliated, hurt to the core, angry beyond reasoning, and heartsick with disappointment, and turned him into a trusting, hopeful, loving person on whom Mary could depend. His encounter with the angel of his dream not only saved his relationship with Mary and enabled them to enjoy a stable home, it also saved his faith in God's leading. He knew he could trust God. God whose love persists, whose love supports, whose love cooperates, whose love searches, whose love was best made known in Emmanuel, God with us. Let's listen to Joseph's story in song. We do our offering here a little differently uh, in that the ushers are just going to bring it forward. If we don't expect visitors to give, the plates will be left in the back and in the front if you so wish to uh, put your contribution in or if you didn't get a chance to put it in before this time. The ushers will bring forth the offering.
Lord, the presents are underneath the tree this morning as we prepare for this week of hectic shipping and packaging and wrapping and cards and those last minute presents. Let us take a moment, find a moment this week to rejoice in the coming of Emmanuel, that we may listen to that small, quiet voice from Bethlehem, that we may hear your voice speak to us this week. Amen. We're on a mission with, together with Christ, questioning, growing, and serving. And there's a number of things in the bulletin. There's a couple of things that are not in the bulletin. To use an old code word for some folks, uh, I'm the center of starlight. If you don't know what that means, get with me later and I'll tell you what it is. Um, I also had a last minute hand in here for ushers and greeters are very much needed for our Christmas Eve service next Sunday at 7 p.m. Rusher should be here by 6.30, as our attendance is usually large. Please see Mike Rieger. He's in the back with the, the hairy beard at the end of worship, if you're able to assist. So Mike is looking for some assistance for uh, Christmas Eve service that is at 7 p.m. It's not in our bulletin. Also, also as David Wells mentioned, there was a, a slip about uh, potential fundraisers. I'm sure there's some better ideas out there and, uh, for 2018, and we'd like to gather those up. So in February, we'll have a coffee talk about this and what we'll be doing uh, moving forward with fundraising for 2018. And then from our bulletin, I'll highlight the office worker is there. There's a write-up on that. Uh, our Christmas giving for Christmas Eve, we split that. This year, it's going to go to UMCOR to help out with the Puerto Rico uh, recovery. Um, at noon today is the, the new book group, If Grace is True. We're still looking for folks to help out on the community meal on Tuesday to play like a host. Uh, the pastor's holiday open house. Um, there's an epiphany party on the 13th. And if I, is there any others out there that I've missed? Looking. All right then, we'll continue on with our closing hymn. God Almighty, we are waiting to uh, be up on the screens. Thank you.
Go out into the world in peace to love God and serve your neighbor in all that you do. Amen.